So welcome everybody to Webinar Wednesday from Sight and Sound Technology. My name is Stuart Lawler and my colleague Carl Braley is with us as usual. We're like a, a double act. We're back every week for, for our Webinar Wednesday event. And on today's session, we're delighted to have as our special guest, Steve Nutt from Computer Room Services. Steve is a guy who's been in the industry for a long time. He's a great guy and he's always coming up with interesting products to sell and talk about. And we're going to chat a bit about what Steve does and also um, reminisce a little bit, I suppose, about mobiles, because the main topic of today's event is mobile phones. Uh, we're going to look at um, accessible mobiles and how they have changed over the years. And I'm sure there's lots of us who have uh, remembered fondly the old Nokia handsets uh, with talks. And we'll be talking to Steve about that as well. If you'd like to get in touch with us during the session, you can do that by typing in the chat window by pressing Alt and H on your Windows machine, Command and H on the Mac, or if you're on a mobile app, activate the chat button. Or you can raise your hand if you'd like to speak by pressing Alt and Y using Windows, Command and Y on the Mac, or on the mobile app, press, uh, press the raise um, hand button. We have a lot of people in the room today, and I know there's a lot of people who have questions and who will want to talk to Steve, and uh, Carl will try to get through as many people as he can, but please be patient, and when you do speak, if you can keep your question or your point as brief as possible, it would be very much appreciated. Next week on Webinar Wednesday, um, Hartshan Consultancy are going to be with us, and Brian um, Hartshan will be joining us next week to talk about all that he does. That's going to be another great session and not one that you would want to miss. So join us next week when we'll be chatting with Brian Hartshan, and I'm really looking forward to that session as well. So let me welcome officially Steve Nutt from Computer Room Services. Steve, we've planned this for about a week or a little more, so you're very welcome. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me, Stuart. Hi, everybody, and uh, it's nice to be here. And uh, let's see what we can hash out this afternoon. Indeed, we're looking forward to a good session with you. Uh, absolutely no doubt about that. Tell us a little bit, first of all, you've been, as Computer Room Services, you've been on the go for a while, haven't you? 1996, man and Goodness. boy, October 1996 we began. And I began as a trainer and a braille transcriber. And I didn't really branch out with products until about uh, probably 1999, 2000. And then I started getting stuff from Speak To Me. There was a company in America called Speak To Me. And they did novelty stuff, you know, like talking things. And I used to get stuff from them. And then I became a reseller of talks in 2002. Uh, and let's... Uh... Let, let's talk about talks because that was a kind of kind of revolutionary, wasn't it? I mean, I'm sure we all remember. I certainly um, remember Steve, and I'm sure you do, holding my first, at the time, Nokia communicator, and sending a text, and it was kind of surreal. Yeah, well, I, I mean, the, the the very first one I had was a, a, a Nokia communicator 9110, and the version of talks on it spoke with human voice. It wasn't synthetic. Mm. And it would spell out text messages. So instead of saying, hello, Stuart, it would say H-E-L-L-O space S-T-U. And, and you, you know, you had to read your texts out like that. It's the first, that was the first time I could ever read a text without connecting a phone to a computer. And it was amazing. And I couldn't believe it. And it was absolutely great. And then I got the 9210i, which is probably the one you had. Yeah. Which, um, but I was, I was friends with Torsten Brandt, who developed talks. So he sent me one of the original communicators to try it, and it was amazing. But then when he got eloquence on the Nokia 9210i, I was blown away. And uh, he had a nice keyboard and things like that. Um, it's, you know, yeah. when I think about talks now, Steve, and I suppose when we look at all the accessibility that we have on, 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 the, on the platforms that we use, and we'll talk about that in a while, I kind of think, I don't think we'd be where we are now if we hadn't had those guys in talks. No, we, I always say we wouldn't be where we are without Talks and Code Factory because Code Factory actually invented the iOS gestures, believe it or not. They invented double tap and swiping and various things like that. So we, without Talks and Code Factory, we certainly wouldn't be where we are. So when you were starting to sell the Nokia communicators, I can well imagine that was generating a lot of excitement, a lot of interest across the UK in your business. Absolutely, yeah. And, and I remember a, a situation where I went out to Germany to see Torsten the first year I was selling it. Um, and, and he had a weekend conference and he put this app on my phone called Cocktails. 
and it was 500 cocktails that you could show to the barman and say, make me that cocktail. Wow. <laughs> that was fascinating, you know. And that was the first app, that, the first non-phone app that I ever had, you know. The first app that didn't do phone calls or anything like that, you know, just, just listed cocktails. And, and Talks worked fantastic with it. And then, of course, we got Wayfinder, which was a GPS app. Yeah. And, and, of course, you know, the rest is history. It was absolutely fantastic. It's really interesting, isn't it, when you look at something like the Nokia communicator. I remember having mine and friends of mine at the time who were using, obviously, small um, Nokias and who were sighted saying, God, Stuart, that thing is huge. And I was thinking, <laughs> yeah, but it doesn't matter. It's the no. first phone I ever had that can talk. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, and not only that, you could type a text on it, you know, really fast, couldn't you? Quite fast with that keyboard. Yeah. And, and it, you know, and, and, and of course, you could, you, you could use the um, Nokia spreadsheet and the word processor and little things like that. And uh, yes, I, I remember it fondly. Um, and all, and then when we got smaller phones and we got the N95 and we got the C5 and the E7 and the E90 and, the, you know, more and more phones came out that were talks compatible. Oh, yeah, it was it was those were the days. And I suppose and there's still people, of course, you still hear people saying I have my C5. I was talking to somebody only a year or two ago who had bought three of them on eBay yeah. and was kind of keeping them um, yeah. in reserve, you know, for the next yeah. X number of years. Yeah, uh, I guess for as long as they will run. But I suppose as time goes on, they become they become less useful, don't they? Yeah. Talks is no longer being developed, but we still install it. So yeah. for people that are interested, we can it, it's not open source. We, we still have to sell the licenses because mm -hmm. it belongs to new ones. But we, we do install talks for people. OK, so that's good to know. Just and, and we will come back to phones in a, in a minute and, and talk a lot more about because I want to talk to you about Android and where we are with Android. But just um, before we do that, maybe just give us a, a bit of an overview of, of other things that's, that are in your catalogue currently that people might be interested in. So we, we have um, various uh, mobile phones and we'll get back to them as well. You know, like the Blind Shell Classic and we have the um, Mini Vision and Smart Visions uh, and, and those. Um, and we also have really interesting things like we have a talking battery charger called PowerMax that tells you the charging state of each individual battery. So it charges triple A's, double A's and all those kind of things. We do all the CareTech color testers. So we do, you know, color, color star um, and those. So they do testing for colors. Um, and uh, yeah, so, so there's about um, probably 170 um, products on the website. So it's quite a big website um, of products there, and, and they're all there. And um, I, was, I was telling Stuart that the thing is, if the only reason I'll sell a product is if it works for us. So the business, the business is run by me and Angie, my wife, and Angie is blind also. And we have one sighted lady in the business as well, who's my support worker. And so the, anything that I sell has to work for me. Everyone's selling magnification, so I'm not because everyone else is. And so, and they're much better at it than me because I can't judge if a magnification product is good or bad. So when I started, it was, as I said, the reason, the primary reason was that um, I, I tended to think that totals got a little bit forgotten in terms of, uh, uh, does it work for the blind? Well, yeah, but you have to have sighted help to set it up or whatever. So everything that I sell, generally, I test. And how do you, is it hard to juggle because you're the tech support, the trainer, you're the salesperson, you're the front yeah. of house guy. Is it yeah. hard to juggle all that with also running a business and doing all the kind of the paperwork and the that? Yeah, I'm also, I'm also yeah. the accounts. And yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it, it is. I mean, some, occasionally I sleep, you know, it's, yeah. it's, it's, yeah. it's that kind of thing. I, I enjoy it. I, I enjoy doing it and, and I'll carry on doing it while I enjoy doing it, if that makes sense. Yeah. And, um, I, you know, I really enjoy doing it. I, I enjoy the interaction with the customers. That's some of my best bits. Um, whether it's going to exhibitions or in, in lockdown, I think a lot more will be done on Zoom, uh, done online and things like that, which is what we're doing here. And I, I think that's a, a great thing. I know you can't get hands on online when you're doing products, but, um, you, you, you know, you, you can get an idea of a product. And, of course, you can demonstrate it talking or whatever, you know. Okay, and 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 you also you were telling me before we came on you, you also provide training, don't you? Yeah, we do training on Jaws. Uh, I do Supernova, and I do uh, MVDA and System Access training. Um, okay. So if anyone needs that, and we do that remotely, we use uh, either Jaws Tandem or we use something called RIM, which is Remote Incident Manager, which I use, which gives me a bit more than Jaws Tandem in in that it, it doesn't need to have a screen reader running at all. 
Okay. Okay. Uh, let's let's go back then and talk a little bit about one of the things I'd be interested to, to get your take on is this transition from the Nokia uh, button phones. And I suppose we were using a mix of button and they were bringing in some touchscreen. I think the N97 had touchscreen yeah. capabilities with talks. But then, you know, um, Apple made the announcement in whatever, 2009, a flat piece of glass that's going to be voiceover. I was very skeptical. I think lots of people were. Were you? Are you yes. skeptical? Yeah. Um, yeah. Yes, I was skeptical, but I wanted to try it because I'm, yeah. I'm adventurous as well. So, so I, I wanted to get as much out of technology as I could. I've always wanted to do that. And I thought, if, if somebody who's blind can use it, I'm, I'm damned if it's going to beat me. You know, <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> so um, that, that was my take. I thought, oh, but I wonder if, you know. And of course, um, Apple, Apple came out and I had an iPhone 3GS, which I think is one of the first ones. Yeah. And uh, then I quickly moved on to Android. And Android wasn't nearly as nice as the iPhone in those days. Um, you know, you had to be very precise on where you tapped and, you know, you couldn't just swipe and things. Ice cream sandwich, they called it, which was the worst operating system for Android I've seen. But people in the know, you know, people in, in the technology know were saying to me, well, give Google a chance. They'll come up with it and, you know, hang on in there. And, and of course, they did. And, um, and, and, and I, I, I love Android, but I also use and train and, you know, and, and like the accessibility uh, of iOS. Mm -hmm. So, so there is a lot of, I suppose, within Android, within the the uh, the world of Android. There's so much to choose from. Uh, there's so many handsets, so many versions of Android. Like, where do people, yeah. where do people start if they want to get into Android? Well, I I must admit it, it's not the cheapest way to do it, but I take the view that if Apple completely control the iPhone, then Google completely control the Pixel. So, if you buy a Google Pixel you're going to get the best Android experience. And now the Google Pixel 3a, uh, 4a, which is a, um, a cut down version of the Google Pixel 4, is I think only £399. So it's like, it's similar to the price of the iPhone SE 2020, if you know what I mean. So, so now Google have brought the prices down and things like that. I would say to people, you know, don't go for the really cheapy cheapest, go, go for a Pixel 4a. And um, but the, yeah, there are loads of Android phones, and some of them are very very interesting. I mean, there's a, there's a, the LG phones, for example. If you're a, if you're an audiophile, and I know you are, Stuart, you love audio like mm -hmm. I do. Yep. The, the the LG Android phones have fantastic DACs. They have fantastic digital audio converters. So you plug a pair of high end headphones in because they've still got headphone jacks in them, and you get 24 bit 192k. You know nice tax and i've never rated apple that great for sound you know for audio for pure audio um even itunes you know they can press m4a is horrible um but that's another subject i mean i've always liked lossless audio and things like that and i've never rated apple but android some of the android phones are terrific audio some of the some of the things with android before was around um how you'd get updates, whether your phone, first of all, could get the updates and then whether your provider would allow the updates to be pushed out. But I, I guess you're saying if you buy a Pixel, that's kind of, that's short-circuited, is that you, you don't? Yeah, but it's, it's, it's even more short-circuited nowadays because Google have pretty much clamped down on it. And they've said that the, the provider can't, you know, not allow you to get updates anymore. So if Google push out an update, generally, um, people should get it what it's not the provider it's the manufacturer is the problem it's mm. not the phone provider it's, it's people like samsung sony and those and if they don't push out the update then you don't get it and that's that's the problem really it's the manufacturers of the phones and i suppose the uh, the manufacturers of the phones can also add their own shell on top of the core android can't they yes they can yeah um and and that's that that can be another issue as well i mean samsung do their own um voice their, their own screen reader as well um called voice assistant uh and it's different to talk back in that it copies a few of the ios gestures so it's more like ios than android so if, if you come from ios to android um new to android then you may want to look at a samsung phone because it may be more familiar with what you're familiar with because it does two and three finger gestures and things like that talk back sticks to one finger gestures and how about talk back to set up from scratch? So if I get a new Pixel today, take it out of the box, yeah. setting it up from scratch is okay? Yeah, just turn it on. 
wait 30 seconds, hold down the volume up, up and down buttons together, and then talkback comes on. Okay. And immediately you get a tutorial on how to run it. Yeah, and I've seen that tutorial before. The Android tutorial it certainly um, is very, very kind of thorough. Goes through all the all the gestures. I, 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 I thought actually in a very easy to um, easy easy to understand manner, and you get a chance to practice them all as well. Yeah, they treat it like a game. So if you if you if you can't get the gesture right, it keeps on repeating it until you do. Yeah. So <laughs> then you go on to the next gesture. Um, I haven't found anything in iOS comparable. The only thing in iOS you've got is practice gestures, but you've got mm. to know them. And, and yes. I, think, I think that's, I think Google have done a good job there, I have to say. Yeah, and of course with iOS, you still have to know how to get into the practice gestures mode do, as yes. well. So yeah. that, that yeah. can be a, a challenge. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, uh, let's see, have we any, uh, Carl, have we any hands raised or anyone who wants to make a comment at this point? Um, we Lots have one people. from Cassia. Okay. Um, I won't try and pronounce your surname, Cassio. I do apologise. Um, but if you'd like to ask a question, you should be able to unmute yourself. So if you want to try and mute yourself, Cassio, and while you're doing that, uh, for anyone else, you can raise your hand if you want to ask Steve a question. Um, or you can uh, type in the chat with Alt and H. Raise your hand with Alt and Y. Hi, Cassia. Hi. Hi, Hi Cassia. Sorry. How are you? It's, Kasia. it's okay. Cassia, sorry. I think, How are you? I think you're, um, first of all, thank you very much for this. It's so interesting. I'm just listening and I couldn't get enough of it. I think <laughs> your guest has um, answered the question. I'm, I'm using I, uh, an iPhone and I absolutely love it. However, one of the previous session, um, it, someone said, oh, I can't remember this gentleman's name, that an Android phone with this uh, software for £249 is better than an iPhone because iPhone has its limitations. So I thought, okay. <laughs> uh, so I, 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 I know the limitations of an iPhone. And I would like to switch in the nearest future from an iPhone to an Android. And this lovely gentleman whose name I don't remember, his name might be Robert, my note, I'm sorry, uh, said uh, if someone is familiar with um, an iPhone, it would be Samsung, but he also mentioned Google Pixels and, and LG. And I'm a bit confused if I can have an answer, please. So I suppose the question is, what is the best phone to switch to from the iPhone? Is that what you're, is that? Yes, something? like okay. like reliable Android. I love audio as well. And I'm very, it's lucky that I'll get the, the software, which is either Synaptic or Semantic. I'm sorry, I cannot remember. Uh, um, okay, right. Can I, can, I, can, I, can I just say, and this is, this is purely a matter of opinion. If you've, mm -hmm. got an, if you've got an iPhone and you're happy with it, Kasia, mm -hmm. don't get Synaptic. Okay. Because you well, I, no, I wouldn't say excuse me. Sorry for interrupting. I am not. I wouldn't say I'm entirely happy because if if I'm on a Zoom and I want to dictate a, a question or a statement, I cannot dictate. I have to type it. Oh, and okay. I was, maybe, maybe I'm hoping that maybe I'm naive thinking that that if I had an Android with that um, piece of software, I would be able to dictate. I would have thought with the iPhone you could type. Um, you could dictate because if no, you bring up the no. keyboard, if you bring up the keyboard. And you then yes. double tap with two fingers. It's just start dictation. Isn't that right, Stuart? No, it, uh, it, does. it It should, Steve, but it may be because Zoom has captured the microphone and because it's muted. Zoom right. may not be allowing yeah. iOS to take the mic back. I, well, that's I'm, I'm I'm guessing. I don't know either. Yeah, um, yeah. It doesn't um, allow. You you certainly can do that on Android. Um, okay. You, you just tap the voice input button, which is above the letter P on the keyboard, I believe. Yeah. Um, and you just tap that and speak, uh -huh. and then tap it again. Um, but the, the reason I said don't get synaptic is if, if, you know, the gestures completely change in synaptic. You have to move around okay. and you lift your fingers off. And it, it's just, it, it's not, it's, it's a bit of an alien concept even to me. I think it's designed for more low vision users, you know, and things okay. like that. Um, and I think, pure, I think Google have done a good job with TalkBack, so why reinvent the wheel, you know? Uh, <laughs> um, I see, I see. And TalkBack so is all built in. If, if you say you love audio, Kasia, do you like... I mean, are you into audio? Do you like lossless I, audio and things like that? No, I, I love Audible. <laughs> oh, Audible. Audible. Oh, yeah. Oh, I don't know whether this is what you were. I don't know if this is what you. Meant. I thought you said audio. Sorry. Um. No, well, any any Android phone would do Audible, quite frankly. Um, uh huh. Uh huh. So that's I mean, irrelevant. Yeah. It's 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 completely irrelevant. I mean, as I said, the little Pixel 4a, I think it is, which is 399 pound or something. Like yeah, that. I don't that remember. Would, that would do. That would that would do you. And you'd have the Google updates immediately. You'd get the updates yeah. straight away. And um, 
you know. So yeah. you are saying that uh, Google Pixels, rather than, you know, I know that this is your opinion, but that's what I'm after. Google well, Pixels, rather than an LG or Samsung. It's not just my opinion. Let's put it another way. Um, okay, sir. Mm -hmm. if, if 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 somebody else, if another manufacturer of a clone of, of of an of an iPhone, if if somebody else came out with a clone of an iPhone. Mm -hmm. It wouldn't be as good as Apple, would it? Because Apple haven't got complete control. Mm -hmm. Does it make sense? Yes, it does. So I look at it like that. I think if Google have got Google make yeah. Android and Google make the Pixel, you're going to yeah. get the best experience, wouldn't, wouldn't you say, Stuart? Yeah, I, I would think so. Make it that, sounds like that, that, that from, yeah. yeah, that makes sense. Maybe, maybe and the there is like. And then I heard Stuart's questions that obviously that it's easy to set, and there's like a little guide on how to use it as well. Yep, and just a shameless plug, we also do training on Android and iPhone, so if you need training I, on yeah, Android... Yeah, I think I, I remembered calling you once, and it must have been your lovely wife who answered the call, but I remember calling computer room services for something. That was a while ago. <laughs> there you go, there you oh, go. Oh, well, oh, I, hope we were, I hope we were nice Steve. to you. <laughs> okay, yes, absolutely. Thank you very much for that. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank, thank, thank you for the question, well, Kasia. Thank Thanks you. a million. Thank you. Thanks a million. Thank yeah. Brilliant. Okay. Thank you. Right, we're just moving Thanks. on. Okay. Thanks, Kasia. Uh, Thank you. We've now got Andrew Summers. Andrew, a uh, regular, regular attendee and friend of Webinar Wednesday. So, uh, should be able to unmute yourself, Andrew. Andrew, to come on off mute. There we go. We got Hello, you, everybody. How are you, Andrew? Hello. How are you doing? I'm back again. Oh, I'm back again. Um, good to hear you. Yeah, yeah, good to hear you as well. Um, Steve, I remember talking to you once at one of the exhibitions up here in Glasgow years ago at the uh at the central hotel indeed yeah years ago yeah. um i get around <laughs> yeah and so do i <laughs> um i have got a samsung j3 um but i'm finding a problem with it with the when i'm calling i have to use it on loudspeaker all the time my headphone, uh, my actual speaker, when I put it to my ear, it's very quiet, no matter how much I've turned the volume up. Ah, uh, so... I need to get a new phone, I think. Some yeah, point. I, I, don't know if it, I don't know if the earpiece has, has gone on it, but the other thing, I mean, when you turn the volume up... Yeah. Are you, are you, are you turning the volume... Are you turning the volume up without touching the screen, or are you putting a finger on the screen and turn the volume up? There is I'm a turning I'm it up with the volume controls on the side. Yeah, the but, but you're not, you, you haven't got another hand on the screen, have you? No, I haven't. The only reason I say that is if you put one finger on the screen and turn the volume up, that turns up yeah. the volume of accessibility. That turns up the volume of talkback. Yes. Yeah. Which so I've got it wouldn't turn up eloquence. the volume of the phone call. You know. I've got the eloquence installed on mine. Yes. Yeah. But Which that, that, I understand would... you can't get anymore. No, you can't. Um, Code Factory don't want to convert it to 64-bit, which is a shame. Um, which is a pity. Yeah. It is a pity, yeah. But, so um, I wasted 15 quid there. Well, you didn't because you, you got a lot of pleasure out of it while using it. And you can still carry on using it. Yeah. So it just, If I've got another phone, I can't transfer it over, can I? Yes, you can, yeah. You can just download it again from the Play Store. All oh, right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So well, you haven't I'm wasted sorry. the fifteen quid, Andrew. Andrew you haven't wasted still, your fifteen quid. Still able to use it. <laughs> so it still it still lingers around in the Play Store then. Still yes. There. For those who purchased it, you can just go to my purchases and reinstall it. Okay. Good yeah. to know. Good to yeah. know. Brilliant. Thanks. All right, Andrew. Thanks a million. Thanks, Andrew. Thanks for getting in touch. Thanks again. Cheers. Thank you. Right. We're gonna now. Oh, hang on. Hang on. Hang on. If I could learn how to. Lower hands, that would be handy. Uh, is it Noma Themba? Oh, Noma Themba, yeah. Noma down in, in Cork. Noma is a visiting teacher, regular web webinar Wednesday attendee. Should be able to unmute yourself, Noma. Possibly. So, Noma, I think if you, if you unmute, there might be a little uh, message asking you to unmute yourself. It, sometimes it takes a second to come up on Zoom. And just while we're waiting for that, a reminder again, people can raise their hands if you want uh, by pressing Alt and Y, or you can type in the chat 
window if you want to say something to us by pressing Alt and H. And I do have a couple of questions we got in by email and we'll get to those in a sec. So if you did send something in by email, don't worry. We did get it and we will address uh, your question with Steve. Uh, although most of them are iOS related, Steve, but I'm sure you're happy to have a go with them as well. <laughs> I'll do what I can. Uh, okay. My, no, my, my, my wife is the iOS expert and she's not. Okay, we can. <laughs> should, may, should may, may. Hi, Noma, how are you? Hi, how are you? Uh, hello. Best. Good to hear you. <laughs> yeah. Um, my question is, when you go Android, what size um, phone are you looking at? Um, for someone to use when they have no vision? That's really a lifestyle choice. For example, I'm totally blind, but I still have the um, Google Pixel 4 XL, which is the extra large. And the reason I do is because it gives you better battery life because it's got a bigger battery. And also okay. there's, there's more space on the keyboard to type, if you know what I mean. So, you, you know, the, the keys are not so crunched up together on a bigger screen. So even as a okay. total, I tend to prefer a bigger screen. Okay, thank you very much because I'm, I was trying to find out um, one of my students is using a, an iPhone, but uh, he has had an iPhone ever since, so he's used to it. But then I have one who wants to buy a phone, so I was not very sure whether there was any um, variation between the um, iPhone and the, the yeah, the, 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 because there are a lot more Androids, there are a lot more different manufacturers that make Android phones. There's a lot of different screen sizes from four point something in, inches right up to six point eight inches, <laughs> and and so you know you, you, it really is. It's 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 like I say about accessibility now. You know, as far as I'm concerned. And, and there are exceptions, there are weak points in iOS and there are weak points in Android. But as far as I'm concerned, it's not an accessibility choice anymore. It's a lifestyle choice. And that's what I'm really excited about. If you're comfortable with an iPhone, nobody's telling you to move to Android and vice versa. If you like your iPhone, that's fine. Nobody's going to judge you for it and enjoy it. Um, I personally prefer Android, but the reasons I prefer Android are not accessibility related. They are because I like the operating system and what it offers me. And it's just like a sighted person. And I find that really exciting. Oh, OK. Thank you very much for Thank that. Thank you, Noma. You're Always welcome. good to hear you. Thanks, Emil. Right, we've just got a couple of questions that have come through, actually, in the chat box. OK. Just let me drag this back up once. Oh, God, I've gone too far. That's not the first time. Um, Michael Enriquez has asked, is there much difference between the versions of Android? Um, yes, there, there's always a difference between the versions of Android, like there is in the versions of iOS. So if you if you get a major version of Android, like version 10 is quite different to version 9, and version 9 is a bit different to version 8 and so on. They always add new, new things, new and weird and wacky and wonderful things. So pretty much, yes, it, it's a bit like the iPhone. Um, if you get a sub-version number, like 10.1, 10.2, then it's not so different. But if you if you get a major version, there's usually, you know, some you know, quite some differences. Uh, but generally, um, like, like, for example, in the new Android 10, they've got new gestures for getting to the home screen and things like that, if you don't want to use buttons, because on Android, you can actually have a home and a back button at the bottom of the screen. Uh, or you can do or you can do gestures with iPhone now without the home screen, it's just gestures. But Android, you can actually have buttons on the screen. And, and you can feel for them and listen to them say home and back and so on. So I like that because Google have given you two ways of doing the home and the back buttons. Okay, brilliant. Um, I've got, I have another one. Um, I'm not sure if I understand this 100%. It's from Amy and it's, um, if you want an Android tablet, what is the best one to get if you want to use Simpatico? Simpatico. Simpatico. Yeah. I know I don't, of it, but I don't know it. I've heard the name myself, but I don't. And there is also another part to that. Does anyone know in Zoom on the iPhone 6 if there's a way to get rid of notifications that keep showing Avatar? Because it means I keep missing what's being said every time it goes off. Well, I can try and answer that really quickly. Uh, that bit, at least. I always, with Zoom, I double tap with three fingers to temporarily turn off speech. 
so that you can listen to the chats. And yeah, you're right. Zoom does keep interrupting when someone is speaking. It says, you know, Steve's avatar or Carl's avatar or whatever. Uh, so temporarily turning off voiceover, Amy, and then triple or uh, tapping twice with three fingers on the screen again will turn voiceover on. Uh, Steve, I don't know. It's probably a very, it's a very big question. What's the best Android tablet? It's, I guess, again, um, it depends on your budget, does it? It, it, well, yeah, it does depend on your, your budget. I mean, again, um, I'd be tempted to say the Pixel Book, but it's very expensive. Um, <laughs> uh, but there are loads and loads of tablets from Samsung to Asus. Um, I've had an Asus tablet and it's been very good. I've had a Samsung tablet. I even had a Google Nexus 7, which was a really good tablet, but they don't do that anymore. Um, but there's a lot of, excuse me, my phone, I'll answer that in a second. Nine, um, seven. so, so there's a lot of, there's a lot of, um, tablets out there. So it's very hard to, this, this, what is the best is a very difficult thing to, to answer of anything, isn't it, Stuart, really? Because it is what is the best for one isn't necessarily the best for others for, for various reasons. Uh, you know, it's like, how long is a bit of string, isn't it really? Um, they all have the same accessibility now, pretty much. So it, whatever you get is going to work the same way. So there isn't a, you know, whereas we used to have some Androids, you know, um, the, the, the only problem with Android is the skin, the launcher. And it, the, the good thing about Android is if the launcher doesn't work for you, if, if, if you are blind and it doesn't work for you, you can actually install a new launcher, which you can't do with iOS. So you can actually install the Google Pixel Now launcher and make any Android phone look like a Pixel now, pretty much. Right. Brilliant. Thank you for that. That's excellent. Sorry to push you on, but we end up with a million, no, million yeah. questions. You're I might right. just add, add one thing to that, Carl. Sorry. All I would say as well is in relation to tablets and Steve, or even phones, I guess you really need to put the device into your hand before yeah. you get it. And, you know, yeah. do you like the feel of it? Is the size good? Yeah. You know, there are so, it's such a personal thing, isn't it? And, you know, as, exactly as you say, Steve, what, what you might like, I mightn't like, or, or you know, something yeah. else. So. Yeah. If you can, it's good to just get these things into your hands and go into a shop and actually get a sense of what they are. I know that's a little bit trickier to do at this moment in time, but yeah. um, that, that's just my, my own view. And sorry, Carl. You, you will be. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Carl and I love had each a, other, just really. Had, just had a quick one from um, Norman Optum. He put, hi, Steve. I didn't realize that keeping the finger on the iOS screen while raising the volume increase the voiceover volume so i guess that's a thank it, you it doesn't it doesn't I, that was an android thing i think that's, oh, that's android, an android yeah it's android. Norman, Norm, norman wants to ask a question in a minute anyway she's got okay. his hand raised bear me one second let me just go down so again you can raise your hand with alt and y if you wish to talk to steve or ask him um we've got david meekle is there any discussion on seeing an ai app coming to android that's a great question um, um i'm going to say no but you don't need it <laughs> yeah, and, and, and I'm going to say, uh, David, we, we actually have asked uh, Microsoft, I was talking to somebody in Microsoft Ireland here last year who was talking about seeing AI app, and apparently they've had loads of requests and it, it yeah. was escalated. But Steve, you, you say there are other alternatives. Yeah, yeah. Um, they're, they're, not, they're not all free, but there is, one, there is one that's free that is brilliant called SuperSense, and it is even better than seeing AI. Um, and there is another one called Envision AI, which is, is is actually a paid for app, but you can you get a 14 day trial to try it, and it is absolutely fantastic, and way better than seeing AI. Um, so, um, SuperSense has an interesting feature where you can tell it what object you're looking for. So you can say, "I'm looking for keys," by typing in the word keys, and then it will actually yeah, you can move the camera around the floor, and if it finds them, it vibrates and tells you and things like that. So they've really gone to town with the AI feature. Um, SuperSense is now available, I believe, on iOS. It might be only in beta, but it's it's free anyway, so it's really worth a try. And um, I, I think the Android apps generally tend to be better than the iOS apps that I've seen so far for for vision type things. Because vision, I was telling Stuart when I came on, vision is my passion. Artificial vision is my passion. You know, like smart glasses and things like that. So I've really got into this in a big way. And I think Android does pretty well with with seeing AI, Google Lens, and Google Lens is another one. Uh, sorry, Envision AI, Google Lens, and SuperSense. Right. Okay. I'm going to great to know. Just right. cut it there quickly. Right, we've got Michael Duplock. Bear me one second. Duplock. Michael, you might Regular. be able to unmute yourself, sir. Regular webinar Wednesday attendee. Hi, Michael. And 
sometimes Zoom takes a little while to uh, to unmute people, but uh, just bear with us. It may be your end, Michael, because I have clicked it. So if you give it a go, there Michael, we, go. we have you. There we we have you. Hello. How are Hello, you, Michael? Good to hear okay. you. Yeah, a very simple question. I I do not have a smartphone at the moment. I'd like to get into them. Mm -hmm. um, what would you recommend? And can we? Can I get apps on it straight away? So there's, there's two approaches to this, Michael. You can either do the thing and go straight into it, jump into it, get an iPhone or an Android phone, and either one, that would be fine. Or you could get a hybrid. And I'm talking about things like Smart Vision 2. And Smart Vision 2 is an Android phone with buttons on it, but it allows you to add apps to it as well. So yeah. you could put Facebook on it and Twitter on it and things yeah. like that on it. So you, you could go the, the middle route and get a Smart Vision 2 or, yeah. or just jump in and get an iPhone or an Android phone. So how long do you think it would take me to sort of learn it? I'm completely blind. I'm in my 70s, but I've got a, a phone, but it's just one that's uh, not a smartphone. I, um, I can touch type. I've got uh, a new laptop from Sight and Sound. Yeah. With JAWS, but I mean, will I have JAWS on it if I got one? No, you'd, you'd have, in, in the case of Android, you'd have TalkBack on it, and in the case of iPhone, you'd have VoiceOver on it. Um, That's the same as JAWS, is it? Yeah, they, they're all screen readers. In, oh, in, I see. You know, they, they, they work as screen readers for mobile phones. Yeah. And um, uh, in, in the case of Smart Vision, it's a modified version of, of TalkBack. Yeah. Um, but you know, the, the buttons approach is, is good if you want to get up and running straight away and you want to be able to dial numbers and things like that. There's okay. one big advantage of, of button approaches, and that is trying to dial numbers on a call can be difficult until you really learn it, can't it, Stuart? You Absolutely. Yeah, it can take yeah. time. Yeah. 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 Um, and so, you know, if you need to get up and running quick, it might be one of those hybrids like, a, you know, smart. No, it's not quick. I mean, yeah. can I get in, could I get in touch with you and have a chat with you in the future? Of course you can. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay, as long as I can get your details, that's great. Thanks yeah. very so much. What, so, so what we'll do is we'll give out Steve's details at the end of the session, Michael, okay? Okay, thanks so, a lot. Yeah, definitely. No Here's problem. Michael. Thanks a million for that. Brilliant. All right, we're just going to quickly run on to Rob Powell. Rob, okay. Rob, you should be able to unmute yourself now. Very there welcome, we go. Rob. Oh. There we go. There we Hello. Go. Hi, Rob. How are Hi, you? Uh, Hi, can you hear me? We can indeed. Yep. You're very welcome. Good, good. Hi, Steve. Um, Hello, Rob. I... I just want to firstly make the point that uh, I think although you're choosing the safe option when you say things that uh, people need to buy like the Google Pixel 4a and so on, um, some of the much cheaper phones, especially for people who are just dipping their toe in the water and starting yeah. to learn, as long yeah. as you make sure it's got stock Android or as yeah. a fairly near stock Android, yes. because most people who haven't got the experience are not going to be able to... Uh, install launches and all that sort of stuff you know yeah. are, are, shouldn't be just dismissed um i agree like, Rob. I'm nokia 5.2 and things like that yeah motorola yeah, yeah. um you know I, I um i smashed my phone i was uh, had a crash on my tandem and smashed my brand new iphone 11 and oh uh, didn't have the money to replace it and it wasn't covered under whatever um and uh I bought a really cheap Motorola and I was really happy with it. Yeah. My only problem was I found Android generally a bit clunky um, compared to the iPhone, but I've been using an iPhone like you since 2009. Um, my, my, my problem was I read a lot of articles, um, newspaper articles and all that sort of stuff, Wikipedia. And whereas the iPhone, you can just swipe down with two fingers from the top of the screen, it'll read the whole article, even if it's 50 pages that there wasn't a simple way of doing that. And that, for me, I know it sounds stupid, was a deal breaker. Just, and why just, I've actually gone back to just, just Just a pro tip for you, Rob, you can actually do that because the gesture for read next item is assignable. So you can assign it whatever gesture you want. But there is no, there's read to end of screen. You can no, assign it to read to end of screen, but not read to end of... Yes, you can. Yeah, it's called read, read, read from next item and it reads right to the bottom of the document. Okay. Yeah, you can do that, okay. certainly. I do it all the but time. I, but what's your comment on what I was saying about, you know, some of the cheap phones, especially if people I, I, want to dip their toe in the water? I, I agree with you, yes. Uh, I mean, 
um, we, if we're talking about experience, as I say, that the pixel is hard to beat, and, and if you buy the wrong one, it could be an expensive mistake. That's why I mentioned that first. But yeah, there are certain phones, like any phone that's on Android One, as they call it, um, which yeah. means that it's you know it's stock Android, like some of the Motorola phones and the Nokia phones. They're they're pretty they're they're, they're pretty darn good as well, and and they're a lot cheaper, as you say, Rob. I, I totally agree with you. Uh, and also. I say uh the motorola's as well because mm, they've yeah. got um some really cool voice and also you were saying about the difficulty of uh dialing on a touch screen just a tip for people i use both android i've used both android and uh I ios well you don't need to dial on a touch screen um i just press the home button on or say uh i don't know if it's going to work if i say the h siri word yeah um, yeah. And then just say dial, and then the phone number, and it yeah, no, works very, no, very well. I'm, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking when you're on about a call. When you, you dial a bank or something like that, and they say now press. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. That's Sorry, what I'm talking about. Yeah. Sorry, guys. Yeah. You're, I, I was actually, and it's funny, Steve, you mentioned, I was on a call the other day ringing my credit card company. And of course, part of the process, you go through the automated, you have to put in your credit card number. Yep. And I, I'm, I, I'm right, pretty, pretty okay with this stuff. But my God, it took, it took a while to do it. <laughs> yeah, it does. It's, it's, it does. Not, it's not straightforward, is it? It's not, no. And that's what I'm saying, yeah. By the way, can I just be very cheeky, very quickly? Is my audio okay? I've got a job interview with Zoom tomorrow. And I just want to check it. Oh, my goodness. Right. You're sounding perfect. It's and perfectly all good. The best, yeah. cool. All the best with it. Yeah, thank you very much. Good luck, mate. Good, Good luck. luck. Let us know Cheers, how you're guys. on next week, yeah. okay? Yeah. I will. Cheers. Thanks, Emil, Rob. Bye-bye. All -bye. right. Um, do you want to take one more question and then... Let's let, take um, one more. Yeah. Please. And then we go to the email questions. Mr. Then. Lackey. Ian, this is Ian, you should be able to unmute yourself, sir. So, Ian, I think he's on our last session as well. I think we have you there, Ian. Yeah, you did. Can you hear yeah. me? Yeah. We, we can um, hear you. How are you? Yeah, yeah Steve. Um, one of the think well two points quickly one having gone over to i to, to using a touch touch screen phone i could never envisage myself going back to using anything with buttons physically buttons. and the second thing could you say something about android and braille support that's a great uh, question i was going to ask that question actually very good question yeah, so um, Android's, Android's Braille support now is pretty good. People tell me they have trouble with it, but I don't tend to have trouble. Um, I'm using, uh, I've used an ESIS 12 and ESIS 40 from Euro Braille, and I've also used the Polaris. And um, I haven't had any trouble with um, Android Braille. And now they've, they've now just introduced, and I don't know if you knew this, Stuart, as well, they've, they've now introduced a Braille input screen. So TalkBack now has Braille input as well. So you can actually type on the screen like you can with iOS. And would you, for example, read a Kindle book? Yes. Using this book yeah. Yeah. You can do that. Yeah. Yeah. So how how does it compare with iOS Braille? Well, um, I have to say that, um, and iOS people are going to hate me because I know I'm uh, overruled by millions of iOS people in this thing, but Android. Braille back is not broken as much as iOS Braille. Every time you get an update to Braille, they break something. Um, and the, the great thing about Android is you don't have to wait for an operating system update because they can update the Braille back app, which is a separate app, um, very, very quickly. Whereas with iOS, you have to wait for, and I know iOS bring it out very quickly now, but with iOS, you have to wait for a, um, an operating system update for them to fix a Braille bug. So, um, you tend to get Braille fixes quite fast now with Android, and and so I'm I'm well I'm quite pleased with the uh, the Braille on Android at the moment. That's actually great to hear because yeah I, I I was that was an interesting question Ian I was thinking about that as well and one of the things I I wasn't aware for example Steve I thought grade two or contracted support wasn't supported but that obviously is, it is. Yep. fully supported now okay yeah, UEB uh, or UK or US. Yeah. Again, you would probably say um, the best thing to do would be to get a phone that you knew had native Android. Yeah, stock Android, isn't it? Uh, yeah. yeah, anything that's um, android.com slash one, O-N-E. If you go on there, it lists all the phones that have stock Android on, and they're the best ones to get, I'd say, for blind people. Yeah. 
Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Ian. Okay, we had uh, just a couple of email questions. I'm just going to go to very briefly uh, an email from a lady who was explaining that she's been using an iPhone. She has an iPhone 7. She generally uses voiceover and gestures, uh, but she does want to get an iPad and was inquiring about whether to get uh, an iPad mini or, um, or an iPad Air. And my understanding is that other than screen size, there is no difference. Um, Steve, I don't know if you've anything that was, to comment that on that. That was my yeah. understanding. Yeah, so the, honest, yeah. the iPad Air has a bigger screen, but the, in terms of processing and functionality, you'll get the very same. Um, so I, I, I suppose the answer to that is because the iPad Mini is going to be cheaper. So if you want to save a few quid and still get the same processing power and same speed, I think you'll be fine on the iPad uh, on the iPad Mini. Can I can I just make a quick comment as well, Stuart? That if yeah. you if you tend to get lost on touch screens then go for the smaller ipad because the bigger the screen you get because now you're in tablet territory rather than phone territory yes. if you start getting bigger screens it's it's easier i'd say i don't know if you feel the same Stuart, to get lost on the screen yep. definitely you know uh yeah definitely and i think generally smaller screens i suppose for especially if you rely on speech and if actually visually seeing the screen is not such an issue yeah, uh, yeah you have less you have less as you say less place to get lost uh we had an email from lisa who said um for my job i have to use a particular word a lot in my job and siri dictation doesn't always dictate it correctly can you tell me how to add a, how to add a word to my dictionary um and, and i think there might be some miss uh, mis mis uh, misunderstanding here because the the dictionary in voiceover is a pronunciation dictionary and the other dictionary on the iPhone is for uh, checking the definition of a word so you can't actually add at least as far as I know you can't add a word to yeah to, I, had to well, I wondered about that too I, uh, I, you, I, I don't think you can I don't think you can either so I don't think Lisa you can actually do that unfortunately it might be very interesting if you could uh, yeah. because what what you really want to do is you want to tell Siri to say a particular word properly. Um, and unfortunately that's not available. Yeah. Um, and the last email we got, um, would you be able to cover how to cut and paste information using voiceover on iOS? And this really is using the text selection uh, element in the rotor, or at least that's how I do it. I don't know, Steve, if you, if you do same, those kind of things. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yes. So selecting the text selection and then selecting the option for selecting characters, words, or lines. Yeah. Uh, and then basically um, voiceover will, will read your selection and then you can go to um, the edit menu and choose whichever option you want, whether that be cut, copy, or uh, obviously if you have a keyboard attached, you can use the keyboard selection keys as well. So command X, uh, command C um, are available as well. So there are email questions. I don't know if we have any other hands, Carl, or uh, comments on chat. Oh, we seem to have we seem to have lost Carl for a sec. Um, just uh, Steve, while, while we while we wait for more questions, um, you mentioned or you were mentioning the Nokia handsets earlier on, and some of those running stock Android seem to be good options for people who want to maybe get into this stuff. They are, yes, absolutely, they are. Um, and uh, I know, you know, I know someone that's I, I borrowed the what they call the Nokia Sirocco um, from a good friend of mine. And it, it's perfectly good with accessibility. It's fine with TalkBack. I, could, I couldn't find any issues with it. Even the launcher was okay. I didn't have to put a new launcher on it, anything like that. And it's Android 1, so it was getting all the updates. It was on Android 10. And, uh, yeah, it's abso absolutely fine. Um, I've also used a, believe it or not, a, a Razer phone. And Razer phones are really particularly good with audio. And uh, they have very, very good loudspeakers as well, so you can boom out sound. <laughs> even from a phone it's absolutely amazing and and they work fine with accessibility i had no trouble again um and they have dolby atmos so you can listen to movies and it almost sounds like surround sound and things like that mm -hmm. and i you know I've, I've had a ball with some of these phones and yes um it, they work fine there's there's honestly more that work fine than don't if that makes sense yeah you know, there, but, there are issues with some of them with their skins but you know we, we can get around most of them mm -hmm. Yeah. What, what, what about, uh, I suppose, the, the other question I suppose that people might be thinking of is somebody who's maybe thinking of getting started with Android. Are there good websites you'd recommend where there's support, where there's lists of accessible apps? Is there email lists? What's the support like out there in the community, I suppose? Um, 
the, the support I would say is the, there's um, there's an, a, a website called inclusiveandroid.com, all one word, and that's kind of your Apple Viz of Android, if you like, mm -hmm. and that has some good articles and good tutorials on it and things like that. Um, there's um, Android. There's a, there's a list called Android Access. There's used to be the eyes free list, but Google have shut it down now. Uh, but there's Android Access and there's VI Android as well. So there's at least two Android lists I know. When when the eyes free list was working, even some of the developers of TalkPack were on it, so they were talking to us. Um, but that doesn't happen so much now. Um, Google have gone a little bit more closed, a bit like Apple now, you know, gone all secretive on us. Mm. But we used to have betas of TalkBack, for example. We could test before release and things like that. Um, we don't get that so often now. Um, but, you know, th th there's, there's plenty of resources out there uh, if, if you want to find out um, how to use it. Okay, and a big new version of Android went on sort of pre-release, was it last week, week before? Yeah. Uh, have, 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 have you been playing with it? Anything interesting to report? Not yet, no. I haven't, I haven't okay. been playing with it. Work has got in the way a little bit. Because um, <laughs> <laughs> what I want to do is I want to put 11 on my phone and just play with it, you know, just, just mess around with it and see what, what the accessibility gotchas might be, you know. And, but, but work has got in the way a bit. I've, oddly enough, I've been more busy since I've been locked down. <laughs> mm -hmm. But I can't complain at that because, uh, you know, um, it's good for me. But, you know, so I'll, I will play with it, absolutely. And, and I suppose one of the things about um, Android and, and, and um, exploring Android, I guess, is that the more people who use it, uh, the more maybe that Google are going to be listening to feedback, you know, so yeah. and they will be all the time trying to improve the accessibility experience. Yes. And I guess the same for things that you might purchase in the Play Store. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, and I think I think there are there are two camps of people, you know, that are talking to Google. One is one camp is saying, oh, you know, my my iOS gesture isn't there. You know, my two finger double tap or triple tap or this or that and um, and isn't there and, and, and all that. What I would say to those people is it's a different operating system. If you want iPhone gestures, buy an iPhone. To be honest, yeah, <laughs> do you know, yeah. do you know what I mean? Yeah, um, it's it is different. It's a different way of working. And I prefer it because everything is done with one finger. So if you do anything with two fingers, it bypass, it, it passes, you know, things like that. So, for example, if you want to double tap on an icon or single tap on an icon, you can do a two finger single tap and that will bypass. So it's almost like split tapping again, if you know what I mean. So you, you can bypass TalkBack and just tap it if you know where the icon is and things like that. And TalkBack doesn't interfere with those two finger gestures. So I, I like that. Whereas you know, voiceover's got two, three, four finger gestures and mm. passing through sometimes with voiceover is a bit problematic, you know. Yes, if you need to if you need to press an application button that uh, that is not being being yes. being um, responded to, yeah. Yes. Um, yeah. What just one other one other I suppose question or one other point maybe to talk about and it, they came up it came up a little bit earlier. We we're talking about phones, let's say low end phones yeah. that have actual tactile where you can actually touch and press a button people still like physical buttons we mentioned things like smart vision uh, mini vision uh, you mentioned blind shell and the great thing about those phones of course is they're all running android as well aren't they they are yeah and and, and they're just a modified version of android and and a simplified version really and um yeah um you've got blind shell which is like a candy bar phone it's like the c5 the nokia c5 a little bit a little bit wider perhaps and then you've got the mini vision and then you've got the Smart Vision, um, and then you've got the Smart Vision 2 Premium, haven't you? Um, mm -hmm. Which has got the OCR package, you know, scanning and things like that on it. And all that. Yeah. So, so yeah, you know, you, you, there's, a, there's a ladder, if you like, of phones that you can go up in terms of simplicity, you know, from, from um, you know, the, uh, the, 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 the and, and the other thing is as well to say, in case people don't realize this, um, Android watches are accessible as well. My my watch just talked and reminded me. <laughs> Excellent. Um, I've I've got um I've got a, a Mobvoi watch. People may not have heard of Mobvoi, but uh, I've got the Tick Watch Pro, and they are accessible as well. So you can dictate on the watch. You can take phone calls on the watch, and they're pretty much just as accessible as the Apple Watch. So it's another choice, and a lot of Android watches are cheaper than Apple watches as well. Um, and they will connect to Android and iPhones as well. So that's another plus. You know. It seems to me that, that Apple want to do everything on their own, but Google don't care who has this stuff, you know. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Uh, one one thing that that was kind of made me think, I guess, how far we've come in a way, or in terms of size. I was uh, showing somebody the Mini Vision phone. I think before Christmas, and I, I kind of had it in my hand, and I was thinking, it's so nice to just fit this in your pocket compared yeah. to a big iPhone or Android phone. Yes, yes. Everything is so big <laughs> nowadays, isn't it? Yeah, it is absolutely, and it is nice to just be able to put it on in your pocket. Um, in fact, I've got um, I've I've got a a, a Mini Vision that I call my pub phone. You know, I just take it out with me. Yeah, when, when yeah. occasionally when I need, because you know I don't want to damage my expensive Pixel Four. Sure. Know? Yeah, absolutely. Switch the yeah. SIM card and off you go. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let's go back to our Q and A. Carl, do we have anybody else who wants to speak? Yeah. Um, bear me one second. There have been a couple of questions on there. Okay. Um. Boom, 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 boom. There is one from Alex Gibbons. Um, Alex seems to be having a chat with himself. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> Alex, you do realise that all those questions, all that, all that text you've sent is actually just to the panelists, and it hasn't actually gone to the attendees either. So you've pretty much just been having a conversation on your own. Um, Paul Clayton has asked, "How much do you charge for training?" Um, basically, um, thirty pounds an hour. Um, so you know it's phone training or you know we can do zoom training or whatever and and, and again I, I train on android and iphone but advice is free so if you phone me just to ask me you know what's the best phone to get and you want to discuss it i don't mind that we we don't charge for that the minute i have to do real work that's when i charge <laughs> fair <laughs> enough fair enough yeah. okay yeah. yeah um we have young edward bates um just had a bit of input, I think, while you're halfway through. Don't forget also you've got the option of Bluetooth keyboards if that's a last option. Stuart mentioned it's tricky. I use this every day and it makes a huge difference. That's a great um, point. What I need yeah. to do. So, so can, I, can I, I just. I don't know. Sorry, yes. Stuart. No, go I, on, Steve. Work I was on. just going to say um, it's worth mentioning the Revo keyboard as well, um, which we sell. And it's an amazing keyboard, it's a Bluetooth keyboard. And it's, it's a numeric pad, basically, with four function keys either side of it and just the numbers. That's all it is. And you can type in the old-fashioned way, you know, ABC, 2 is ABC, 3 mm. is DEF, and so on. But it also has a speaker, so you can take phone calls on it. And it also has a headphone socket, so that when it's connected to the iPhone or Android phone, it can route the sound of the iPhone through headphones, through wired headphones, even though the iPhone doesn't have, um, the new iPhones don't have wired headphone sockets, if you know what I mean. So you can, it, the Revo even allows you to use wired headphones, um, to, which is pretty cool. So does that mean that uh, that your, your screen reader speech would come through that as well? It absolutely does. Oh, wow. So what you can do is you can put your phone in your bag or in your pocket, and you can use the Revo in your hand, and you can hear it. So you can you can you can scroll because it's got scroll uh, functions. It's got you know it, you you switch it into modes so that four six and two two four six and eight become scroll buttons. So you can read tweets on it and read all kinds of things on it like that. And and then you can switch it back to the. You can have voiceover switch between audio um, between the phone and the the um, Revo. So it is is a unique in in terms of a Bluetooth keyboard. Fantastic. Okay, yeah, so that's brilliant. the uh, the Revo yeah. keyboard available from Computer Room yeah. Services as well. Yeah. Okay. Fantastic. Yeah. Right, we just yeah. got a quick one. Michael Henriquez using the Smart Vision Two. Which app? I'm assuming which icon is to open attachments in email. Uh, to open from the from the email. As app, in, when you're in an email, to what is what is the command? I guess on the keyboard to open the attachments. I know there's been some issue with this. I think you'd go to the options menu, wouldn't you? You'd press the key one equivalent. I always call them key one from the old Nokia days. <laughs> yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah, you, um, do, you do the, you, you go to options, wouldn't you? In, you do, and then you go down to attachments, I think. Yeah, as far as I know, Michael, if there's a problem with that, Michael, give us a call. Um, we should be able to try and get in touch with the tech support team and the guys will be able to talk you through it. But I, I think, and I don't have one of those phones in front of me. So I think that's what you do. But I, I think we had a, question of that before carl didn't we i seem to remember oh what sorry i think we had a question about that previously or somebody was well, asking we did, indeed. Yeah, yes, we did yeah. about opening the attachments i think that was on 
on all the devices, to be fair, um, mobile devices, rather than just actually the Smart Vision one. Yeah, there may have been a few issues there. Okay, any other hands or, or uh, comments? you just got Paul Clayton just left. Need to drop. Cheers for a great session. Um, no we've got 12 people with their hands raised. Wow. All right. So I'm going to go to Let's Amy. Amy Stannard, and we'll see how many we can actually get in. Okay, and if uh, just for people who have their hands raised, if you can keep your question quick, we'll try to get through as many people as we can so that everybody can get to talk to Steve. And if Steve can keep his answer <laughs> yeah. short and sweet. Not that it, I was in charge of this bit of the session. <laughs> <laughs> so, right. Amy, we'll, you should be able to unmute yourself. You try to tell me not to go on, Carl. Okay, <laughs> I've got that. In the politest possible fashion, yeah. <laughs> he said it, Steve, not me. <laughs> Sorry, that's it. So, you should be there, Amy. Amy, how are you? Hiya. How are um, you doing? Um, it was part of my other question because obviously when I put it for on the chat, it didn't work. My, my friend's got an iPhone. It's got the Revo, and he's still struggling with gestures and stuff. And they were talking. We were talk I think it was on yours the other day about Synaptic. I'm not sure now because I haven't heard about these hybrid phones. Whether he's going to be might have a better time with a hybrid phone or try going down an, a simpler an, um, Android phone and use Synaptic. Because he's, he's, he's tried everything. And I've tried to teach him. I mean, he's in his 90s. I've tried right. to teach him about 20 times. And some of the stuff he can do on the Echo, which is how he's getting around it on the, at the moment, but yeah. there's a load of stuff on there he can't do so, on the phone because he just simply, yeah. I've tried to show him. He's like got his, the Revo and he's having trouble as well. He's got the Revo and he's still... He's still, mm. he's still not getting it. Okay. Okay. So I wondered whether it'd be better for him to come in, coming away from iPhone all, all together. And I've, as I say, going for Synaptics, that's really, you know, quite an easy. Yeah. Or that's... trying a hybrid, I wasn't sure. It's another option. You, you know, you could go for Synaptic. It really depends on what he wants a phone to do. Because Synaptic have got entertainment and, you know, radio and things like that on. But, you know, um, so of these hybrid phones, so the, the, the blind shell has and the minivision has um well actually minivision doesn't do radio does it um blind shell it, it, it has an fm radio um, has an not FM an internet radio, radio. Not yeah internet yeah radio, not right. internet radio yes, no. no no um so yeah so the, the blind shell has um well actually no the blind shell has a youtube interface which is interesting um so that sorry so that you know it depends it really depends on what apps he wants to use um, and how far he wants to go with his phone, to be honest. It, it's, it's probably worth having a conversation with him, Amy, to try to, yeah. and maybe do a bit of, maybe go through with him the features of all those handsets. And then, you know, you, you'll find that you have a little, um, you know, if there's a kind of a, a short list of things that are really important to this gentleman, I think that would be the, the way forward. Yeah, can you, can you, um, can you, are you going to be putting an email out with I forget I forget the other guy's name that's yeah on. Steve so we're we're going to put he's, Steve's he's details at the end up. yeah at the end yeah. of this session we'll we'll get Steve to put out all his contact details so people can get in touch all right yep yeah thanks okay thanks very much Amy brilliant uh, so uh, do we have Carl back with us uh, would help if I unmuted myself that's okay <laughs> uh, we've got Philip. Philip Troll, it's, uh, it's up to you, sir. Oh, you Phil is a regular attendee at our events. So welcome, Phil. Oh, he's gone. I know there he is. You might just have to press your unmute. Um, Zoom, doesn't let, Zoom doesn't let us unmute people anymore. You have to unmute yourself as part of the, the new updates in Zoom. Yeah, it's a bit of a backward step, that, isn't it? Really? I, th I think it is, too. It's quite yeah. challenging for some people. Yeah. I think they do it in the name of security or something like that. Yeah. So will we maybe come back to Phil in a minute? Yeah, I think we'll, I think we'll come yeah. back. Um, we've got Reese Watt. Reese, okay. Reese, you should be free to speak. Oh, you just muted yourself. That's it. Hi, Reese. Oh, hiya. How are you? Uh, yeah, I'm okay. What about you? Not a bother, thank you. Not a bother. Yeah. You're in Scotland, I, I, I imagine, from the accent. Yeah, yeah. Lovely, mm -hmm. lovely. Um, yeah, no. Um, I was going to ask, um, like, see with like, the, um, the 
like I, I've I, um, I've got an iPhone um, which I I've been using for a few a few years now. Um, but how how does that how does that work with the um, braille braille thing, the braille display on the iPhone? Is there like a separate thing that you can use? Because I, I'm I'm always used to using the voiceover, but is there like a separate thing you can use as a braille display as well? Or? No, there's there's a braille input screen, so you can type on the iPhone screen, but you, it, it, there's no braille output, so it, it's only typing into it. So if you want to, if you want braille output, you would need a physical braille display. So what, what would would that mean? Typing on a like a, like a, is this a braille keyboard? Is yes. That... Yeah, but most braille displays have a braille keyboard. Some don't, but most do. And then you just okay. type on a bit, like, like typing on a Perkins, really, but on a, on a braille display. Would you need a, sep a separate machine for that? Yes. Or? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. All right, Rhys. Nice to speak okay. to you. Thank, okay. you for your, thank you for your question. Thank okay. you, Rhys. Um, we just got... Dun, 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 dun. Lisa Redford... Oh, Lisa, Lisa. Like Lisa, Lisa was the lady who asked the question about the dictionary. Oh, so, I may have yeah. missed that. Hi, no, she, can you hear an email. me? We can hear you, Lisa. How are you? Hi, yeah, can you hear me? We yeah. can indeed. Yeah, okay, yeah. No, because it, it was actually slightly wrong um, what you said about the question. It was oh, not my apologies. Siri. That... No, it's Sorry. fine. Um, it's not Siri that I was trying, having the trouble with. It's the dictation on... Um, on the uh, iPhone when I'm sending an email. I mean, the word I was trying to use is befriender or befriending, and it just doesn't like it. It either comes up as misspelled or I get some rather interesting, <laughs> I've even had beef render before, you know, yeah, but yeah. it usually just yeah, comes up as render, misspelled, yeah. and that's why I wanted mm -hmm. to try and add it to, to a dictionary. It's not Siri, it's the Apple dictation. There, there isn't, to the best of my knowledge, a feature to allow you to do that with dictation. Um, okay. Even though when a word comes up as misspelt, you can't add it to a dictionary like you can on a on a computer. If you, if you answer me this, if you type "befriender" on on your keyboard, does it still come up as misspelled? On the keyboard, yeah. I don't think so. In um, that case, it can't be the dictionary because otherwise it would say misspelled if you typed it as well as. It's, it's, oh, it's sorry. Yes, if I type yeah. it on the keyboard on the phone. Yes, sorry. I'm thinking about a computer. Yeah, it would come up as misspelled if I, if I type it. But obviously, I just type it in and leave it because it is what the it is the word I want. Yeah. So, so isn't it like Android, where if you if you type a word and it says misspelled, but you carry on and you press space, yeah, it should you add should. it to the dictionary automatically. Yeah, it's just that when I'm dictating, I it just I'm always having to stop and change it because it just doesn't like it, and I wondered whether what, there's any it, way to. Yeah, the, the only the only very quick thing I can say is try and accentuate yeah. the B. So instead of saying befriender, say befriender. Yeah. Now it may come up with befriender, of course, but <laughs> does, this, yeah. this is how dictation works, unfortunately. Um, yeah. But if you say befriender and you put a slight gap in say be friend yeah you, you, you may get it you know it's, it's just one of those yeah. silly things that dictation suffers from yeah, yeah. Uh, my my understanding uh lisa and again i i just I'm, I'm not sure how much of this actually happens but my understanding when i read about um when i read about this originally with apple and siri was that the uh, the voice input on apple in general is meant to learn from your corrections um, right. I, yeah. I I personally have not seen much evidence of that. I have to say, but, um, <laughs> no you know, interest. best of luck with it anyway. I suppose. Thank you very much. As, All right. As a, as a, oh God. Um, as a as an aside, sorry about that, folks. Um, as an aside, I would say Google's translation of dictation is much better than Apple's, in my experience. Okay. Yeah. Good to good to know that. Yeah. Thanks, uh, Lisa, for, uh, and thank you for clarifying that question. And sorry for I, I, I didn't really uh, didn't do justice to it. So my apologies for that. Right, who have we got next, Carl? Um, we have Ashrafia. Ashrafia. So Ashrafia, you may need to unmute. You will need to unmute yourself, rather, and then you should be able to speak and ask your question. I think we have you. Okay. Hello, everyone. Hi there. How are you? Yes, I'm good. So um, 
I've forgotten the lady who just rang in. That wasn't my question, but when I use dictation, things like if I'm trying to say one, it will spell O-N-E instead of the number one. So sometimes I want the number one and sometimes I want the word one, depending on what I'm trying to say. So I don't really understand what it does. And there's other words as well. I did raise it with somebody and they were like, they couldn't really help me. So I'm trying to say something. I'm saying, well, that doesn't sound right. I did actually write a list of these words. I can't remember because that wasn't my question. But I've noticed it with different words. It spells things. Don't, don't even get me started on dictation. Oh. Um, I hate dictation. And the reason I hate it is, for example, I've got a friend in Michigan called Michelle. And she's yes. got one L in her name. So it's M-I-C-H-E-L-E -E instead of E-L-L-E. -L -E. And if I say call Michelle, it will never pick her up. Yeah, I found that with with dictation. But interestingly, over a period of time, because obviously you can tell from my name, um, it has learnt to say things like my name properly, my mum's name, my auntie's amongst and it's spelt right. But it's almost like I had to train it. Mm -hmm. So I had to yeah. type it in a few times and then I made it, I've made, I've trained it almost. So when I'm That's saying it, and I'm like, wow, you spelt your son's name. That's really hard to say. I, I, I think, I think we're not at that place yet where dictation is a replacement for the touch screen, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. We're not uh, there. It, it's just not, to me, it's not always accurate enough. But it is interesting to hear your comment that the training is working for the, for the, yeah, uh, for yeah, the, the voice training, recognition. Like, so that's good to I'm know. Like, things yeah. like, you can't get my children's names because I'm writing something. Somebody's like, what did you, who is that new child? I went, no, come on, guys. You know I use dictation. Okay. People don't always use their common sense. But By the way, I can't go into it today, but you can set up Siri shortcuts. Um, and if you set up Siri shortcuts, it will listen for certain phrases and type literally mm. what you put in that shortcut. Uh, just, and had, the reason had you why a separate, was, yeah, you had a question, yeah. The reason yeah. why I did ring, yeah. no one's able to help me is, so I use that thing the gentleman said, you know, when you scroll down, and I think it's called the talk it tool. The continuous read with two fingers. Okay, that's the one. So I use yeah. that. Why is it sometimes when someone sends me an email or anything, it will start speaking English and halfway through it started and it suddenly starts speaking a different language, a different accent. So that, that generally is to do with how the, the email has been coded. So if there's a different language, maybe there's been a language change in the email or even if there hasn't, sometimes there must be a language code yeah. in the email. I have seen that as well. And there, is a, set, there, is, there is a setting in iOS to turn it off. There is. In settings general somewhere. I can't remember exactly where, but there is. What, what, do, I, what do I switch off? Uh, language detection. Language do you know, detection. Do you know, if, if, if you go into settings in the search box and just type language detection, detection you'll find it, it. It, it should bring you right to the place you need to be. Yeah. Hey, so I go into settings and go into language detection. Absolutely. Yeah, and turn it off. And if it doesn't yeah. work, come back to us. Okay. And just for a go, Steve, I did purchase a phone off you many, many, many years ago from you and your wife. And the very next day, someone stole the phone off me. Oh, Ouch. God. <laughs> I know. Everyone's like, what? Yeah. But anyway, it's so lovely to hear your voice. I remember your lovely wife as well. You were so it's, great. I'm talking about nearly 20 years ago. Yeah, Angie's lovely. I agree. I, you know, I'm biased, though. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Rash. So thank Rashid. you, guys. Thank Thanks. you so thank much. You. Lovely to hear you. Thanks a million. Thank you. Bye. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, let's go back to see to Carl. All right, here we go. Um, who have we got next? I've got to scroll down the list now. Bear me a second. Oh, for goodness sake. Great, um, great questions coming in today, by the way. So thanks, everybody. Um, for your Norma input. Pearson. Norma, okay. Should allow you to unmute yourself, Norma, if you'd like to speak. Norma, you might just need to press the unmute button at your end to turn your Hello. mic on. Hello, can you hear me okay? How are you? Yeah, we have you. Good, thank you. Um, I just wanted to share um, an insight to the commenter who asked about selecting text using voiceover from the rotor. I struggled for a long time with this because I was going through edit and trying to just use the word select. However, a couple of weeks ago, I discovered that if you add something, I think it's called text selection yes. to the rotor, it's much simpler, exactly as you described. But I think when I'd been hearing people talking about it, because I'd found select under the edit menu, that's where I thought I had to look. I didn't understand that I had to put something else onto the rotor called text selection. So I just thought that was worth sharing as 
I have been confused by that for a long time. And then the other quick thing I was going to say that if people have got questions about their iPhone, I was very apprehensive about ringing the Apple Access helpline. And they are so incredibly helpful that I now use it all the time. I just like use it like be my eyes, you know, you ring them up, they will walk you through what you've got to do. They will wait. They will understand that you have to take time to do it. So if anyone thinks, oh, I, I don't feel comfortable about ringing somebody up and asking a stupid question, then they're actually really nice. And it is worth it because as you said, iPhones are very expensive. But if you think that you can ring up and I have had hours and hours of help and I think your gentleman is very economically priced at £35 an hour. But if you pay £600 for your iPhone, if yeah. you then ring the helpline and then they help you do something and it takes two hours, you can just knock that off the price of your iPhone and soon it, it balances yeah. up. I, yeah. I just want to comment to say I agree with that entirely. And we've, we've also been in Apple stores. So even if you haven't bought an iPhone yet, you can go in an Apple store. As long as you make an appointment, you can go in what's called the Genius Bar. And they'll they'll help you and they'll show you and they'll help you set it up and all kinds of things there isn't any support that i can think of better than apple support that that is one thing i will say i would agree steve and i think it is very important that i really did not want to go to a touch screen i was absolutely terrified mm. and like yeah. i think the lady who just spoke said i had my phone stolen and i approached the rnib and they said but if you're totally blind the only thing you can do is have an iPhone. And I was like, and it took me a year, but <laughs> I went in so many times to the Apple store and go, no, can I have another feel? Can I have another look? No, can you show me again? And I go to the iPhone stores in London and I met a guy there who, he was just, you know, your average Apple Joe. And as part of what he wanted to do for his own training, he would switch on voiceover as a sighted person and switch the screen off and make himself use voiceover only. And he said he could do everything he wanted to do like that. And I think it is, it's, it feels so, I mean, I'm, I'm not old, old, but I'm not young. And it feels so, you go in there and it's kind of, oh my God, it's all trendy and fast. But when you actually speak to the trainers, etc., they do go the extra mile and they now go, hi, hello, nice to see you again. All right, back again. And I, I think if you can afford the outlay, the backup you can get for free is very useful. And you mentioned Apple Viz, and I've only just got used to trying to do stuff through that. But again, you can see videos or listen to videos more accurately. Yeah. And they talk you through step by step. So I just thought it was worth sharing if people don't know about it, that it's all there. Thank you very much, Norma. Thanks for sharing all that. And thanks for your comments. Very nice to hear you. Okay, let's keep going. Right, we've got Nic Nicola Dixon next and Norman Octon. I haven't ignored your um, hand raised, uh, just to let you know that I am going through the list and I'm going down name by name. So we will get to you in another couple. It is a long list, so we are doing going as quick as we can on this one. So Nicola, uh, frequent visitor to Webinar Wednesday, you're welcome. Just need to unmute yourself and we get you on the air. Ah, I think. Yeah. Oh, she's well, there. Always, always I'll unmute you, yeah. Right, I'll just I'll just move on to the next one quickly. Yeah, we've come back to you, Nicola. Now, please do. Set my apologies, Hashmuk. Hashmuk Meta. Hashmuk, we, we have you. We have you. How are you? Hello, I'm fine. Thank you. Uh, somebody already asked the question I wanted to ask, but can you tell me, is a Braille uh, a keyboard an option on iPhone to uh, use uh, in order to uh, type text? Is it available on iPhone? If so, how do you activate that? Um, yes, it is. I'm, I'm just trying to think because I, I it's in the rotor, isn't it? So yeah, it's, it's in the rotor, isn't it? You add it to the rotor. It's called Braille keyboard, I believe. So, you, so you, yeah, you need to go into voiceover settings and accessibility. Sorry, yeah. accessibility and voiceover settings, and then tap into the rotor and just tick the uh, the Braille keyboard or Braille. Uh, sorry, it's called Braille screen input. That's Braille what screen it's called and, in the and is it any easier than Cortic keyboard to use the Braille keyboard? Has anybody tried? 
I I really haven't used it to any degree. I'm uh, I'm not best placed to comment on it, to be honest. I, 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 I kind of have used it, but I find it more difficult to type on a piece of glass rather than just touch the keys, if that makes sense. I'm, oh, I'm just not used to it. No, I'd, I'd, I'd say try it out and, yeah. you know, give yourself a bit of time with it. Do yeah. it when you have a little bit of time and see how you find it. I think it does take a little while to get used to the space you have and to get your fingers sort of lined up in that space. But, right. uh, you know, probably definitely worth trying it out anyway. Because you have to hold the, the phone landscape as well, which is unusual. You do. Yeah. You know. yeah. Because at the moment I'm using QWERTY keyboard and it's quite a tricky one to use it with touch screen. Because I'm used to yeah. uh, using, uh, you know, the button phone, like Nokia phone for typing text and things like that. But I'm learning how to use the iPhone. I'm getting better. But if it's a Braille keyboard, I thought it might be easier because it would have only like six uh, keys. So to... the way the way it works is you put your you put your six fingers. So you put three yeah. fingers of each hand on the on the screen, and right. it calibrates to your fingers, and then you lift okay. your fingers off and start typing. Um, okay. And it, it does work. You, you, try try yeah. it out. It's, it's worth yeah, I'll try that. Yeah, yeah. give it a yeah. try. Brilliant. Okay. Thank you Thanks very for, much. Thanks thank you very much for your question. Thanks okay. a million. Thank you. Okay, bye. okay. we're going to keep going. Brilliant. That's that one. Um, next is... Dun, 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 dun. Norman. Okay, Norman. You may need to unmute yourself or activate the button to, to turn your mic on. If you, we have Norman there. Um, I've, it's, I can't unmute, so it is down to Norman. Yeah, I think Norman, you there should we have a little, we, we have you, we have you. Right, good, good. <laughs> How are you doing? Um, I'm all right, thanks. Hi, Norman. Uh, hi, yeah. Steve. Long time no see. <laughs> Indeed, absolutely. Um, yeah, I have just acquired a new iPhone, new to me, but it's an iPhone 8. It doesn't have um, an earphone socket, an earphone jack. It uses the lightning connector, and I always wondered, well, how would the cable know uh, whether it was supposed to be an earphone cable uh, or a charging cable? Well, in actual fact, this has proved to be a problem because when I sometimes when I charge the phone up I get a message that comes up saying um, this device cannot be supported or something like that this device may not be supported and I unplug it and then plug it back in and sometimes it works and sometimes it does the same again yesterday I did it three or four times and I switched the phone off and on again so you've got the lightning to 3.5 mil adapter yeah You've got the adapter. Um, the yes, I've got one of the, I, I did get one of those and, and that, that sort of works, but I did get that message once. But even when I'm charging, just using an ordinary USB charger. So, um, so, so what you're saying is when you plug in the charger, the phone thinks the charger is an audio cable. I think that's, that seems to be it. That seems Are to you be using it. an Apple charger, an Apple cable? I'm using an, I'm not actually i'm that's I'm using a braided way. cable, and that may be yeah. the problem oh, I think yeah it's I, the I think that is cable, it's I think that is the problem Apple yeah. are very hot on that oh uh, yeah, but I'm using an be. apple I'm using an apple charger I don't that's think it matters it's yeah. the cable it's yeah. the yeah. wiring it's the wiring in the cable, yeah yeah okay, okay, right, well, that's question answered, thank you <laughs> <laughs> no problem, Norman. Thank you for your question okay good to, good to talk to you okay right okay. next we've got a couple left. Um, we're going to move to Devaki. Devaki. So I'm just, not even going to try and pronounce your surname. So un unmute yourself when you're ready and uh, ask your question, and then we will get to everybody else. Um, right. I seems to have. I oh, know these there. Devaki. Are you there? No sign of Tavaki. It's, there's no voice no. option now. It's gone. Oh. Okay. Maybe we'll come back to Tavaki. I'll just pause that one for a moment. Yeah, we've back. got Paulette. Oh, no, sorry, I lied. Oh. Let's go to our friend Oren. Ah, uh, Oren. Oh, we have to go to Oren. Oren from Dublin. Good to have come a on, Dublin Oren. person on the call. Afternoon, folks. Hi, Oren. Um, How are you? 
Very good. Thanks very much. Uh, I'll try not to keep you too long. Got three questions um, for Steve. One is, <laughs> I had a Google Pixel um, about a year, 18 months ago. I gave it up and came back to Apple um, just because I didn't kind of like the gestures where you maybe would do the swipe up and left with one finger yeah. or swipe yeah. up and right. Um, and I'm just wondering if I decided to go back to get you know a, a new phone in another year or so, should I give um, Android another go, uh, given that they've just done an update? Um, the second question just relates to the apps. Um, I believe some apps are not available on on Android that are available on iOS. Um, one of them, I'm not sure, I'm just throwing this one out for, but for example, is Be My Eyes available on uh, an Android is. device? Yes. yes, it is. It is, okay. Mm -hmm. And the last the last question relates to Microsoft Teams. Yeah. Um, are you familiar with using Teams on Android and is it completely accessible? One of my colleagues who's not, um, is who cited, uh, did have issues with opening files uh, in a Microsoft Teams uh, team, and it was a known bug uh, that that Android had uh, admitted to. I'm just yeah. wondering, do you have any experience with with Microsoft uh, Teams on Android? Yeah, I mean, I, I I don't use Teams a great lot, but on the odd occasion I've used it, it seems to me to be accessible. But I've only used it to talk to people, not not to open files. So that aside, it, it seemed accessible to me. Anything that Microsoft have done on Android pretty much has been accessible, I have to say, you know. Um, and as for your questions as to whether you should go back and try it, well, of course, you know, that's entirely up to you. You're still going to get your up and left and down and right gestures, but they're more forgiving. So what that means is you can do them as wide as you like, and they work a lot better than they did in earlier versions of Android. It's much easier to do it. Um, that that said, if if you don't like that gesture formation, you don't like it. You know, it's it's, it's like I said, it's a different operating system to iOS, yeah. but it works just as well if you can master it. Yeah, one one thing that really kind of frustrated me and really got me going back to a Apple was, and I don't know, I'm sure I was doing something wrong, but mm -hmm. it, it was, I said it was Google Pixel, and I I seemed to get caught in a loop um, on the what I would have termed to be the the home screen where it seemed, there seemed to be two windows, maybe a little window at the top, or two, or, or, or the screen was partitioned into two, where you had some apps that were constantly on any page that you would scroll to, yeah, I know what um, yeah. and other apps that weren't. And I seemed to be getting, you know, I was swiping right and going to, you know, I was trying to find a messaging app or something. I was getting caught effectively in a loop. Um, you, you were in what's called split screen mode, I think. Yeah. That's yeah. where you've got two apps on the screen at once. Um, and you can close them just by doing the home gesture, which is um, um, down and down and left, I think. That's right, yeah. Um, I, I do it more, more than think about it, if you know what I mean. So it's, it's, it, I think you were in the split screen mode, um, but I haven't been in that mode for ages and ages and ages. I think it's very hard now. Was it on Android 8 or 9? Your, your, um, yeah, I think your, so. Yeah. yeah. Well, now you're on Android 10. It's much harder to do that because you have to hold and drag to get into split screen mode and things like that. Okay. So, so it is true. harder to do that now. In fact, if, if you manage to do it, it I'd be surprised now. Okay. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a pretty good experience. Um, that's all I can say. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not saying that you should switch to Android, but if you do, you know, there's a lot of, there's a lot of help out there now. And, you know, there's a lot of, um, with the exception of Seeing AI, which is the Microsoft app, and Soundscape, there aren't many apps that I know that aren't on Android that are on iOS. Certainly not in the mainstream. Um, and Be My Eyes, as I said, is certainly on um, Android. Okay. Um, in fact, Be My Eyes have got the... If, if you go into Be My Eyes itself, even on the iPhone, they've got the Google Specialist channel, haven't they? So you can, you can dial up Google using Be My Eyes and get support that way as well. All oh, right, okay. Yeah. Okay, that's brilliant. Thanks very much for answering those questions. You're welcome. Thanks, Oren. Cheers, Oren. Thank Bye -bye. you. Okay. Um, right, hang on two seconds. Philip, are you, are you there? Yeah. Hello, can you hear me now? We yeah, can. we can hear you. Yep. Oh, hi, yeah. Um, I've bought 
a, an evaluation. I got a valuation copy of KNFB Reader uh, from the Play Store, and I've only got eight recognitions left. Yeah. Um, how much is it, or do I have to get it up from the Play Store, or can I get it from you, Steve, with, with a better deal, or what? No, it's it's about the same amount on on the Play Store as as we sell it for. But I honestly would say at this point, Phil, don't buy it. Um, All right. And the, so, and the so what do you I recommend say, instead then? Are, are you on Android Ten? Um, to be honest, I don't know. I've still only got the um, uh, Galaxy S5, so I don't know. No, you're How do you tell what Android. version you're on? Um, if you go into settings and about, it will tell you what version you're on. But oh, I'm guessing okay. with the S5, you're probably on Android 7 or 8. Um, and, and it works on 8, but it crashes like heck on Android 10. It just isn't worth it. Um, and, and that's God's honest truth. I wouldn't stop you buying something if you know it was going to work for you. Okay, uh, so what, but, what could I get instead then? So what I would do is I would look at um, an app called uh, Envision AI or an app uh -huh. called SuperSense. Those are the two best apps, I think, on Android for reading. Um, well, for, 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 for scanning something? Yes, yes. Um, there's one called SuperSense, which is free. So you can try that and have as many shots as you like. And there's one called mm -hmm. Envision AI, which they give you a 14-day trial. And then I think it's something like... Thirty-nine pound a year, or something like that, or or you can pay a bit more for life. You know? So, are these both available from the Play Store? They are, yes. Oh right, thank you. That's that's brilliant. You're welcome. Yep. And uh, yeah, because I need it more than ever now. Because I don't know if you heard my uh, my wife passed away. So I did, Phil. I'm sorry to hear yeah. that. Yeah. So uh, you know, I'm uh, struggling at the moment. I understand. I understand. I'm very sorry to hear that, Phil. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Okay. Have, thanks, have a look Dave. At Super Sense and Envision AI. Right, cheers, guys and girls. Thank you, Phil. Thanks for tuning. Thanks for cheers, your Phil. question. Right, I'm just going to try. I know we're going to start being a little bit more wary of the time. The stewards of stickler for um, kicking you all out early. Um, that, that bad. What time you are. Finish for, is it? Uh, right, well, I'm, we'll just, gonna, I'm just going to try Divaki again. Just bear with me Divaki, one second. Okay. So yeah, we, we're into about the last ten or so minutes. We'll finish around quarter to four because we've. I'm very oh, appreciative. Hello. Of time. Hi, Jackie. How are you? How are you now? Hi. Yeah, it's such a long struggle. Yeah, actually, um, I want to, you know, my jaws and uh, Zoom text combination was bought long ago. So, but jaws, I think I updated it a couple of years ago. I want to really get them. Again, do you still have that offer? I know this is not connected to this. Uh, same okay. thing, but, yeah. I'll, I'll yeah. do it quickly, Stuart, if that's okay. Yeah, yeah perfect. Uh, Devaki, the deal is still on. If you go online at the moment, you can buy the JAWS upgrades and SMAs for £95 each. Okay, so, uh, and, and what about if I want to get it for three years? Um, you can double up on the SMAs. That can only be done until the end of the month as well. So okay. you will actually allow okay. me to buy two yeah. SMAs. And what about, see, supposing I'm in the process of getting another new computer, but even if I buy it and use it on my current computer, laptop, can I always change it when I get my new computer as well? Can I put it on that? You get three activations per license anyway, so you'll never yeah. have any issues then. And if you do happen to use, use them up um, legitimately, we can always reinstall them for you, so that's not a problem. Okay, lovely. Uh, thank you. And another one, actually... Yeah, dictation is the one which I use very often. Um, it's it's never perfect, but still, I find it useful. If we use the, you know, the uh, typing um, certain techniques, like you jump word by word or line by line. First, you dictate your passage or even whole email, and then um, just uh, go word by word, and then find, go near where you are having the fault in the spelling or whatever, and then you have to edit it manually. There is no other option we can do. But the minute you start typing a couple of letters of any word, normally there are some options given on the toolbar. Um, if we are good enough in moving the finger up to the, you know, the, where the keyboard is, just above the keyboard, there are three words will be coming in the option. So we can choose from them as well. Sometimes we don't have to really type the whole word. So that's how I do it. Um, I find dictation very useful because I don't still have to type the whole thing and I only have to edit the wrong words. So if we learn how to edit it, I think it's very good. Thank yeah, you. Definitely.
definitely, definitely good, good tips there. Thank you, Javaki. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Appreciate it. Right. Okay. Um, bear me one second. Let me just lower this hand. It's a little bit easier to see what we have. Right. There are still. Right. I'm just going to go to Paulette, and we're obviously, like we say, we're aware of um, the time now. Paulette, you should just be able to unmute yourself. Hello. Oh, there Hi, Paulette. You, How are you? Hi. Um, I've got an old iPhone SE. Do you think it's worth updating to the new one? <laughs> um, not if you don't want to. I mean, the, the old iPhone SE still rocks uh, iPhone iOS 14, doesn't it? So you, you've got the latest updates. The great thing about Apple is that they update for about six years. So That's really good. <laughs> um, so not... Not, not unless you, you absolutely want to, then, you know, but, but having said that, the, the, the new iPhone SE is nice um, and you've got the home button and you've got fingerprint and, you know, you've actually got a physical button on it. So, again, it's another good choice if you want um, to. How about the, because um, I like a lot of sound, good quality sound for music. Is it quite good for music? I'd say it's SE better too? than the old SE, yeah. I'd say the music quality is better than the old yeah, SE. Yeah, it should in be. My, in my view, yeah. My understanding is that you're getting essentially the same um, innards or, or most innards of the iPhone 11. Yeah. Plus the whole. Yeah. 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 That's good to know. So Thank you for you. Thank you. All right, Paulette. Best right, of luck okay, if you buy it. Thank you, Paulette. Um, right, we're just going to quickly move on to Mark Smith. Mark, how are you, Mark? Just unmute yourself if you can and uh you'll be able we to go. speak hi mark Hello. Hi. Hello, mark. Oh, he's muted himself again <laughs> zoom does funny things i think it's it takes a, a very crazy system but it's wonderful mark it is you should be clear oh no you've muted yourself again <laughs> you should be there mark, now we, mark. Want, we want to hear you <laughs> hi mark, can you hear me now can we can hear you that's the one we've yeah. got you okay thank you um, I've got a J, um, J6 Samsung phone um, using Talks back on it and wondering if anyone's got any thoughts or whether Steve's got any suggestions on what could be a good new purchase for a new phone because it's a little bit out of date now and I'm using a lot of dictation for text messages but I don't always find that the, the, the text dictation software was very good. You, you don't find the dictation software very good on, sorry, which phone is it? Uh, J6. The J6, the Samsung phone, yeah? Yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Um, I mean, you know, I find the dictation on, on Google phones pretty good, but I don't know what version of Android the J6 is on, so it's hard to say. Um, you know, the, the, my, on Android 10, dictation is really good, but on, on some phones, it's lesser because they're older phones in terms of older versions. I don't know how old the J6 is offhand. Um, I've had it, had it about two years. Yeah, and is it, is it getting updates still? Yes. Is it on Android 10? I, I don't know without checking. Yeah, so, I mean, if it's not on Android 10, try and get it up there on Android 10 and you might find it's a big improvement. Okay, thank you, Steve. You're welcome. Brilliant, thank All you. Right, Martin, uh, Mark, Mark, nice thank you. Nice right, you. okay, right, what we're going to do is, there have been, I think, a couple of extra ones. So we're just going to do Dolly McLaughlin. You should be able to unmute yourself, Dolly. Hello, Dolly. Hi, Dolly. Yes, hello. No, there sorry. you go. <laughs> we're, we're, we're reaching the end of the day. Steve is singing a song there. For... <laughs> this is the encore. <laughs> Dolly, hopefully you can unmute yourself and we you can... Uh, you there can we go, the Dolly. Question. Should oh, be hi. yours. Hi, How are you, Dolly? Oh, great. Um, I, I would like to ask, um, I heard, um, I spoke to him this morning, I've forgotten his name, isn't it awful? I'm old. Steve? Anyway, Steve, Steve yes, yeah. sorry. Yeah. Steve. Um, I heard about this keyboard uh, that you can put onto your iPhone, is that correct? Revo, yes. Yeah, yeah, that, that, you know yeah. me how, how dinosaurish I am. Um, do you think I would learn that to use that properly? I think so, yeah. Um, how much yeah. is it by the way it's expensive for a keyboard for a bluetooth yeah. keyboard let's get that out of the way it's 225 pound 
Okay. Um, but but and it's a keyboard, it's an audio device, it lets you plug headphones into your iPhone as well, even if you haven't got a socket and all the things I said earlier. I mean, it sounds fantastic. You know, I would, I still use my, I use my iPhone as well as Nokia. So there yeah. you go. But yeah. I admit it. But I mean, as, as I say, to start doing, if I want to do, you know, using buttons again, that would be the one, wouldn't it? Absolutely, yeah, because it's yeah. it's just like using a, a Nokia C5 or something like that. <laughs> yes. You know, you can you can two A B C. Terrible. I want to go backwards, <laughs> but <still. laughs> yeah, but I mean, yeah. you you can have both, can't you? Because you can have a smartphone and yeah. use the Revo to yeah. instead of the touchscreen. Yeah, and yeah, some yeah. people can type really fast on the Revo, you know. Well, instead of buying a new phone, I think yeah. Uh, yeah. I will do that actually. But and I the Revo will the, the Revo will travel whatever phone you have. The Revo will work on it. So. Even if it's iPhone or Android, the uh -huh. Revo works on both. So, and and uh, if I go abroad, you know that that works as well wherever I am. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, so, yes, yeah. that's yeah. fantastic. Yeah, I think that's that's my main question. Thank you very much. All right, Ali. Nice to nice to hear from you. All right, brilliant. Take care. Thank you, Ali. Bye bye. Bye. Right, I think Amy. Did we get a question from Amy? Amy Stannard. We did. We did. Yeah. Yeah. About Amy was asking about a. a different phones for a friend she was helping. Right, so, bear me one second. Amy, did you have another question? Do you want to unmute Amy? yourself, Amy? If you have a question. Hello? Hi, Amy, we have you. Hiya. It was um, on, on, on my iPhone when I'm using, uh, when I'm using VoiceOver and stuff. Is, is there a way, because I, I, um, read a lot of fantasy books. I read a lot of stuff that's got you know complicated like names and stuff, or even just people's surnames. Voiceover garbles a lot of it, like getting like is like um, you know like if you if you've got a surname that it's not like used to, or is there any way to train to make the make it a bit clearer? Because like if somebody's sending you an email address and you're trying to pick up the name and surname, you're in a book and you're trying to. A lot of the time, it comes for it just comes through all gabbled. There is a Stuart, isn't there a, a yeah, pronunciation so dictionary? Yeah, there is a pronunciation dictionary, Amy, in voiceover settings. Yeah. Um, so, so if you, you go into voiceover settings, and basically it's like a lot of dictionaries and other screen readers add the word, the actual word, and then the word the, the way you want it to be pronounced. Um, but like, like a person's surname wouldn't 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 already be in it, so I'm not quite sure no. how. That would... no, so you, you, can add you have to add them yourself. Add it yourself. Yeah. Sorry. You can add it yourself. And how would you, and how would you do that? In you settings, go, you've got you go into settings. You go to voiceover settings, and you'll see the pronunciation dictionary in there. And if you get and stuck, just, they may drop us an email. Add. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And it'll be, it's very, it's very um, self-explanatory. There's only two fields. There's the actual word and then the way you want it to be pronounced. That's it. So you would. Um, ah, right. I didn't realize you could add stuff. Like, I, thought it was just, I thought it was just like a dictionary, you know, stuff already in it. I didn't realize you could add. Yeah, you can, yeah. You can build it yourself. Add stuff to it. Oh, that's yeah. really, that's really good. Cause I get sick of, as I say, some, some people's surnames that I use all the time. It just garbles them every single time. Yeah. All right. Thanks very much, Amy. Thanks. Thanks for your question. Right. We have, and I can't remember how to pronounce the name, Kasia. Oh, Ka Kasia, or Kasia. Yeah. Kasia. Last and lucky hi. one. Hi. Sorry, hi, can you hear me? Hi, Kasia. Hi. My phone is talking, oh, it's annoying. Um, so I had my question answered um, as regards to an Android phone. So that was Google Pixel, Pixel, Pixels for okay. eight. And yes, and I mentioned this uh, additional app, which is 249. And I wonder in what circumstances, because Stuart said that, so Stuart, Steve said that it gestures are different. So it, from the, the ones I would have got with Google Pixels. So, but I wonder in what circumstances the, the app, the 249 app. <laughs> Sorry, which app? I wonder in circumstances that the phone spoke. I wonder in what circumstances that would be advisable that the, the, the software. Because I got very excited about it. Which software are you? Are and you... there was one of the previous sessions on mobile phones. Someone said that um, I don't know who this man was. That an iPhone has its limitations. So an Android phone with that software, synaptic or semantic. Synaptic, okay. Oh, synaptic, yeah. Yeah. It would be better. That's so. 
can I get an answer if I can so, be signposted? So synaptic, so synaptic has a limited subset of, of, of applications on it. So on a home screen, you'll get things like internet, radio, TV, um, I see. email, and so on. Beyond that limited set of applications, you, you're not expected to do anything else. Whereas TalkBack gives you access to the whole phone. Does that make sense? Yeah, you see, I see, because what I thought is talk back on an Android and it's a voiceover on an iPhone. It's yeah. like a, the narrator with Windows. Yes, it is. And that yeah. synaptic would be like JAWS on Windows, and it's not. It's not, no, absolutely oh, not. Okay, I see, I see, I see. Okay, yes, so it gives me extra things, like you said, the uh, radio. Uh, basically, um, um, synaptic is, is a, a, a bunch of self-voicing applications, is, is basically what it is. Would, uh, would you say that, Stuart? Would you agree Absolutely. With that? Yeah, absolutely. That's, and that's it, all it is. Yeah. It's a shell. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it wouldn't make it possible for me to book tickets via uh, Eventbrite, for no, example. No, no, no. Okay. You need, you need uh, talk uh, back for that. Okay, great. Thank yeah. you very much for that. Thank You're you. Welcome. All right. You're very welcome. Thanks a million for your question. Thank you. Okay. I don't know, Carl, if you have anybody else waiting in the wings. I think, I think that's it. Okay, I think that's it. All right. Well, I'm going to uh, thank Steve sincerely for giving so much of your time, Steve, this afternoon. Uh, I think there's quite a lot of people who want to get in touch with you after the session. So right. would you like to give out your contact details, how people yeah, can get in touch and, and find and out about I, your... Before I do that, Stuart, can I just say that at the moment, just for this uh, seminar, there is a 10% off store-wide on my website code. And if you do <laughs> SS10OFF, in the coupon field, it'll oh, whack ten percent straight. Oh my if goodness, that's very good. Thank S you very much. Can you say it again? So S it's S SS for sight and sound, because uh -huh. they invited me, and then one zero for ten percent, and then OFF for off. Oh great, that's right? brilliant. So you you can bang that in, and anything that you order on the site, there'll be ten percent off. S not not the shipping, unfortunately, but the, the goods themselves. Right. Brilliant. Well, thank you. Thank you for yeah, that, just, Steve. Just great to... by way of saying thank you to you, Stuart, and Sign Sound for letting me come on. Um, well, we've, we've been delighted to have you and hope we'll do it again. Yeah, great um, stuff. Yeah. So, um, so my, my contact details, yeah, our uh, uh, email address is steve at comproom, C-O-M-P-R-O-O-M dot co dot UK. The website is www.comproom.co.uk and the good old-fashioned phone number is 01438742286. Fantastic. Okay. Uh, thank you, you everybody. And you on Twitter at Talking Droid, by the way. Talking Droid. <laughs> Excellent. Talking Droid. There you go. Uh, thank you, everybody, for your attendance at Webinar Wednesday today. Sincere just, thanks to Steve. Just, just take it one minute. It's nearly service. finished. Right. And uh, I think that's just finished. I think. Just. I think. That lady is still unmuted. Uh, yeah. So sincere thanks oh, yeah, to, to, yeah. um, to Steve. And we'll be back next week with Brian oh, okay. Hartson okay. okay. from uh, Hartson Consultancy at 2 p.m. next Wednesday afternoon. Information on that session will go live very shortly. But until then, from Carl and Stuart and everyone else here at Sight and Sound Technology, stay safe and stay well. And we'll talk to you next week. Thanks for listening in, guys. Thank you, Stuart. Thank you. Thanks, Carl. Thanks, Steve. I